Good morning and welcome to River City. My name is Linus. I would love to take a few minutes and tell you what's going on this week. If this is your first time to River City, we want to welcome you and we would love to connect with you. If you received a connection card, you can fill that out, bring it back to me at the Info Hub. I'll be out there after service. Or you have another option where you can go online, click the I'm New tab and you can fill a connection card out there. We are so glad that you came and you're here with us today. We are about to jump into a brand new semester of Logos Bible Studies right here at River City. And the purpose of Logos is to equip you with a deeper biblical foundation. No matter where you are in your walk with Jesus, there's a class for you. You can find all of the classes online under the tab Logos. Be sure you go get signed up today. Youth at River City, we are really excited about some things coming up. Be sure to mark your calendars. Look into June 12th through the 16th, we have Youth Camp. There will be more information coming soon on this. Also, this month on the 25th, we have a really fun trip planned to Six Flags. There will be permission slips at the Information Hub. I'll be waiting there after service to speak to you. I would love to meet you and talk to you about it. And then lastly, remember, we have youth service this Wednesday, 7 p.m. at the River City campus. Don't miss it. Marriage Weekend is only one month away and we are really excited about this event. We know that you'll be blessed and enriched by the guest speakers coming to River City. Make sure you go over to our website, click on Marriage Weekend and get registered now. Today is Growth Track Sunday, and if you're new around here, this is just for you. We would love to get to know you and help you find your place here at River City. There's childcare and there will be lunch provided, and we're meeting at the Info Hub 15 minutes after service. See you there. We are so thankful and glad that you chose to worship with us at River City today. Remember that you can stay connected to us on social media throughout the week. Make sure you go over and follow us there and also our website. Now let's all stand to our feet and let's welcome Pastor. Come on, let's offer that to the Lord. Hallelujah. God, I thank you, Lord, in your name, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Come on, I feel something. I feel His presence. I feel His power. He responds to my praise. Hallelujah, God. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, we could get, we could get wound up real quick this morning. You, you guys act like y'all ready to preach with me. And... Uh, I, I, I guarantee you, I will not hold you all day. You can be seated, and uh, hope you've had a great week, and I hope you have a better week this week. We're going to talk about this morning about being stronger and, uh, and finishing strong. That's what we, we need to be strong in the Lord. Amen? Strong in the Lord? What does that mean? That means I'm going to apply the Word of God and some things to my life that's going to help me. And, and if I can help you this morning, uh, understand just simply that just starting to pray a little bit more. What do you mean? Well, I don't pray at all. We'll pray just a little bit. And we'll get into that today. But we're going to be stronger. Areas to increase your strength. What are some areas that you like to increase your strength in? You know, I remember in the 70s, in the 60s, when men played football, that there was no such thing as a weight program where you lifted weights, right? And in the 70s, uh, we, we started lifting weights my freshman year in high school. And, and, man, we'd lift those weights, and we just knew we were getting stronger for football. And little did, did we know everybody else was doing that anyway. So it was just going to be a big fight. But areas in our, in our lives that we want to strengthen ourselves is physically. I want to physically. Uh, I want to be better physically. I want to be better financially. I want my finances, this year I want my finances to be stronger. So what does that mean? You know, we have this thing called inflation. 
And our money's not worth what it used to be worth, correct? I mean, if you don't believe me, if you eat eggs, <laughs> if you eat eggs, amen. And I, I live in town in Robinson, and I wonder just before long, everybody in my neighborhood's going to have chickens. So if you don't, have, if you don't like roasters, crew, uh, roosters, roasters, amen. That's, that's what a good rooster's for is to make a roaster out of him. Amen. But don't, don't let that drive you crazy. I want to be stronger. So what is it that makes me stronger when I, what causes me to have strength? And you know this, if you've listened to me for years, I've, t- I've said this many times, used this illustration. Is it the weights that I use to lift? Is that making me stronger? Or is it my muscles that I put those weights in front of me and I see them and my muscles just automatically just automatically starts growing, amen. My blood pressure starts getting up, amen, right? Because I'm fixing to lift some weights. So what is it that makes me stronger? That's, now here, here we go now. What is it that's going to make me stronger this year so I can be a better Christian? So I can be a better Christian. That's what we're going to talk about today. So is it the muscles? Is it us or is it, uh, let's, let's take the weights. Let's, let's let that be the enemy. Or is it the enemy coming against us? What causes us to, to grow in strength? Well, I'll tell you this real quick. It's not the weights and it's not your muscles. It is the act of resistance. Did you hear me? And when you start praying more, when you start reading your Bible more, when you start giving and you start living and you start going to a life group, just be sure the enemy is going to attack you. You're going to be attacked because you want to be stronger. And so what is it that's going to make me stronger in the kingdom of God? Well, I'm going, to, I'm going to go ahead and say it. Well, the enemy can make me stronger. Am I inviting the enemy to attack me? By no way. You don't want to attack all out assault of the enemy. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying what's going to make my faith stronger is I'm going, I'm going to be put in some situations to where my faith has to be stronger. It has to work. I have to stand on the Word of God. I have to, I have to believe that God is going to, and my finances, I, that means uh, if, if I'm going to be stronger in my finances, then I'm going to have to be more disciplined. See, it's going to cause us to have more discipline all the way across the board. And so, how about mentally? How many of us are suffering mentally? And what do you say mentally? You know, a lot of people have a lot of anxiety. A lot of people are depressed. My wife, she looks at me. She thinks she can just look at me and tell me when I'm depressed. I said, baby, just because I don't have a smile on my face doesn't mean that I'm depressed. Amen. So, and also emotionally we need help with our emotions not just mental you know, mentally affects the emotions and and the emotions i need to be helped emotion emotionally because if we're not careful we're ran by our emotions are you with me this morning you getting anything out of this come on somebody say amen. amen you ever been ran by your emotions Somebody get to talking about something. Somebody begin to talk about a situation that happened five years ago, right? Five years down the road behind us, and you start talking about this situation that involved me and another person, and before we get through, I get fat and mad. I really, haven't achieved, I really has, have not achieved what I'm wanting to achieve because I'm wanting to be stronger. So being stronger doesn't mean me showing myself getting mad is going to fix it. No, what being stronger is going to be me standing there and resisting every, every, every stone of the enemy, every arrow he shoots, every time he tries to slap us, any time he tries, he is... I believe that we will be strengthened to the point that he said, that doesn't work anymore. I can't just take all their money away from them anymore and them stop living for God. No, when I did that, they started living for God even that much the more. Amen. And I'm going to tell you the times that we live in. The reason I'm preaching this this morning is not for my good, but it's for your good. The times that we live in demands us. It demands our best. It demands us to be stronger than we were last year. It demands us to be stronger. Come on now. It it demands us to be stronger this year. Amen. This year I'm going to be stronger. 
and relationally. Well, I kind of struggle in the relationships. I don't, you know, some people just don't like people. But if you're going to win somebody to God, they can't be your enemy. I mean, you're, you're going to have to, you're going to have to build a relationship with them. I was thinking about, you know, we teach a lot of Bible studies here. And I was thinking about teaching Bible studies. I heard of one pastor that has, he has taught over 30, no, he and his church has taught over 30,000 Bible studies in the last 40 years. And that is a large church. But the resistance I want to be stronger spiritually. So I'm going to have to learn to resist. I'm going to have to learn to resist financially when I see something. Oh, oh, I can catch up on that. Net. Oh, I'll just go ahead and spend this week's paycheck. Amen. Oh, let me, can I get a, can, can you front me next week's paycheck too so I can spend that too? Because I found something that I really want. And then you bring it home and you realize you could live with it or live without it. That it really didn't, after it's been in your house a certain period of time, it really has lost, it's lost what it did for you. It gave you that good feeling. Ooh, doesn't that look good? I love that. Amen. Now, if I had to decorate the house, we would be in trouble. My wife is a pretty good decorator. But if, she said, what would you have on the wall if you, if you, if you were decorating? No, not that one. I started to say a picture of the president. <laughs> or the vice president. And I'm not making any, any I just don't want there, I, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not saying anything about any party right now. I'm just saying there's certain people that I don't want to follow after. Now, that, let's don't all clam up on me now. <laughs> but, but, you know, there, there are people in life that, that just do you like that. And they get under, you ever have people just get under your skin, get, get on your last nerve, stand on it. I mean, not just standing on it, but they got maybe high heel shoes on if it's a woman. And can you imagine a woman walks around, how many pounds of pressure, we're not going to go there, is on that little thing on a pair of high heel shoes? You heard me, I said we wasn't going there. So mentally and, and emotionally, relationally, uh, we're going to have to build relationships. That, hey, how are you doing? That, that means you're going to have to put yourself out. Well, I don't like to build relationships. I don't, I don't like other people. I just like, well, if, we're, if you're ever going to be fruitful and multiply, you're going, there's some things you're going to have to do. And that, that you're going to have to learn how to build relationships with people. You know, we walk up and we dry, we call, I guess, dry knock a door. I don't know what they call it. We, we uh, meet somebody and we invite them to church. But let me tell you something, the way you, we're really going to reach them is not, you know, invite them to church by all means, but the way we're really going to reach them is you ought to come to my group. Amen, you ought to just come to my group. If you'd come to my group, amen, I believe God would really do something for you. Amen, so let's be stronger this year, stronger spiritually. A picture, you know, what is a good picture of strength? And I have a story here I want to tell you. Uh, how many people like Antique Roadshow. That shows your age. I like Antique Roadshow. They bring those things on there. Well, this guy and his wife, they brought an Indian blanket to the Antique Roadshow. And when they got there, they saw them in the crowd. And they actually took them out of the crowd and took them, I guess, to the front of the line. And they begin to go over this, and they ask him, uh, what is your purpose here for this Indian blanket? He said, we know this is a Navajo. This is a Navajo Indian blanket. Uh, and uh, he says, well, I just want to, I'd like to see what it's worth, you know. Might want to sell it sometimes. And boy, they all got over in the corner. And he thought, well, if it brought, you know, $500, $1,000 for a blanket, that's a lot of money. They came back over to him and said, that blanket that you, this blanket that you have is a real Navajo blanket that was probably put together, made in the 1840s. And this little Navajo, and these were people that never had anything. The, all, that's all they had was a, this, and they just want to see what it was. They didn't have, a, they didn't ever get, they didn't have somebody that could help them get, a, get ahead in life. You understand that? Oh, it's, it's so much easier when you're born to a family and, and, the, and you got everything. 
But he, he, he this, 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 this family didn't have everything. And so he began to examine this. And as he examined it, he said, this Navajo blanket made in 1840 is worth between four hundred and six hundred thousand dollars Woo! I say, woo! Whoa! What? My poor family that don't have anything, that doesn't have anything. Hey, that's mine. Let me tell you something. When he walked away from that place, he didn't walk away, he and his wife, but he walked away with two security guards on each side of him because what he had was worth something. Amen. Let me tell you something. What God has for us is worth more than the trillions of dollars. Woo! Hallelujah. That we see spent in this world. And So... One area, you know, being spiritual, it'll impact the physical, the financial, the mental, the emotional, and the relational. And, and we are spiritual beings. We're made in the image of God. We, we're made in the very image of God. And, and, and listen to what the Word of the Lord says in Proverbs 18 and 14. And, and the Word of the Lord says, The spirit of a man will sustain him in sickness, but who can bear a broken spirit? Just leave that right there. Who can bear a broken spirit? Have you ever been broken? Now go look at Psalms 51 if you want to see someone. David had a broken spirit. When he found out he had sinned, he had killed Uriah, the child had done. Even though he took took, uh, her as his wife, he still had done an awful thing in the sight of God. And it had to be revealed to him And the spirit of a man will sustain him in sickness. But who can bear a broken spirit? He was broken because his child died. King David was broken in heartache. The the despair, I I I do not want to know what it feels like. Because the only way I could know is I'd have to experience that with my own family. And first of all, I'll say this. It's not fair when parents die before their kids. Or grandparents, or, or mom and dad. I, 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 at funerals, I, I look at moms many times and look at them and say, you know, I just hate that they had to go this young. Amen. Because they were, you know, such a blessing. But spiritually, and, and we're strong in our spirit, it trickles down. It tri- when we're strong in our spirit, if Chris, Pastor Chris is strong in his spirit, I'm strong in my spirit, the leadership in this church is strong in your spirit, that means we're going to have a church that is strong in the spirit. Let me tell you something. We mind spiritual things around here, and that's why we have moves of God. Did you hear me? The move of God doesn't walk in and just happen haphazardly. It happens because someone has has prayed and put purpose into this and we've sought God. And somebody said, well, how do you know when God's there? Because you live by faith. If you was ever in a service with us, maybe your first time here, there was a person over here praying not long ago, a few weeks ago, the presence of God. Last Sunday it was like, it was so powerful that the presence, there was actually a feeling that passed through the congregation. You could feel it just stirring, and it was the presence of God that was stirring. I bet if we lifted our hands right now, I bet if we lifted our hands right now and began to worship Him, whoo, hallelujah, we'd begin to feel the presence of God again. I messed up. I'm up here with that paper today. (laughs) Okay. I'm not perfect. I just think real quick on my feet. So, you know, David experienced some times of trauma. Listen, and this is something that Chris used not long ago preaching. He, he used uh, 1 Samuel 30, chapter ver, uh, verses 1 through 6 and verse 8. Let, let, let's read there. Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziglag on the third day that the Amalekites had in, in, invaded the south of and Ziglag, attacked Ziglag and burned it in a fire. Okay, go ahead. And taken captive the women and, the, and those who were, with, who were there, the women and the children, from small to great, 
They did not kill anyone, but carried them away and went their way. They just kidnapped their wives and their children and the old men, whoever's there, and we're just going away. These are going to be our slaves, amen. Next verse. David and his men came to the city, and there was there he saw it burn with fire, and their wives, their sons, and their daughters had been taken. Oh, my God. Then David said to the people who were with him, lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. They cried until they couldn't cry anymore. Have you ever cried like that till you ran out of tears? Amen. They, they cried until, hey, you know, they'd been ta- their lives, they'd been taken captive and, and, and taken away from them. And it wasn't like they were planning on giving them back, you know. Like one guy said, he said, if somebody broke in my house and kidnapped my wife, when she got real good, woke up after daylight, they'd let her go So when she started running that mouth. <laughs> I'm sorry, ladies. You, you all can all throw rocks at me. I, I, I'm but, but here, here, you know, David, he lost, he lost his wife, he lost his children, and he was willing to do whatever it took to get them back. Actually, he went to the Lord in verse 6, I believe he goes to the Lord, uh, and, and now David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of, of stoning him. Man, the people, they were willing to stone him, the men that was with him. Actually, what they were actually doing at the time, you know, the Philistines were their enemies, Right? Okay, at this time, actually, was when the kingdom was split, Absalom was, and then David was part of, uh, king over part, and Absalom was king over part. Can you imagine that? Absalom was his own son, and you don't think he suffered some tough times. His own son tried to push him out of the way and take everything. I'm like, wow. Man, he had trouble in his family. You ever have, anybody here ever have trouble, family trouble? Oh, man, it, it just, okay. So David was equally distressed for the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people were grieved, every man for his sons and his, and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. And he, he, he in verse 8, let's go to verse 8. He prayed and asked God, what should I do? Should I pursue them or should I just stay here? Now, God, I want a word from you. I, I, I got to have a word for you, from you before I move on this because this entails a bunch of people. The reason we preach the way we preach is for you. To keep us, to keep us going the right direction. To keep us all going the same direction. Amen? Somebody says, why don't you take your church in this direction? I said, no way, Jose. We got so many young couples in here, we're going to take it the young couple way. Come on, come on, older people. You ought to jump up and down and shout because when we're dead, there's going to be somebody to keep the church doors open. There's going to be somebody else right behind us having revival. Oh, man. And and listen, so David inquired of of the Lord saying, shall I pursue the troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered, okay, shall I pursue the troop? David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I pursue the Should I pursue after them? Now listen, this is what the Lord, and he, he answered him, Pursue, for ye shall surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. You're going to recover, if you will pursue them, you're going to recover every one of them. What would you do? What would you do if you knew that what you did for God, there was no way... He was going to let you fall short. No way he was going to be there to help you. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll never, no, I'm not going to leave you, forsake you. I'll be with you even until the end of the world. I'm going to be here for you. I'm, you know what? Some, how many of you feels like sometimes that the Lord is so far away from you that you don't even know him? Well, come on, man. I'm going to raise my hand on that one. Hey, man, that's, uh, hey, I've been there before. I like so far away. Hey, Amen. Well, all it takes is a little talk with Jesus. 
All it takes is, to, why don't you put the music in and when you're driving down the road and, and, and start singing about, oh, he's a good God. I'm, I'm saying that for Chris over here. He's a good God. That's his favorite song. Chris Goff, that's his favorite song. He's a good God. Isn't that, that the song? I mean, you can start singing one of those songs. Or how about holy water? Hey, man, how about some holy water? Ooh, I like that holy water sang, song. There's a, there's, I just have so many of them on my phone. Thank God for, I mean, I'm even going to stop and thank God for technology today. Because, boy, back when I was a kid, you want to go put two songs on the same album or on the same eight track. Y'all know nothing about that, do you? Uh, y- y- y'all probably think about CDs, you know. Oh, oh wow, y'all had CDs. That was, a- man, I had an eight track. So, so watch this. They had taken all of the possessions. They'd taken everything they had. Took the kids. Took the wives. Took the. I- I'm sure the older men that didn't go to war. Fled with them because David had been all fighting not against the Philistines, but with the Philistines. They went to help the Philistines in a situation. And when they come back, they, they, could you imagine this? Well, I'll tell you what, oh, David, I tell you, if we'd been back home where we belong, we wouldn't be out here losing our wife. I'm telling you, if we'd have done this, if the preacher would have done this, or. Oh, Jesus, help us. You know, we're living in an hour where, where we don't need to even be saying, well, the preacher's done this. We're living in, an, in such an hour that it's high time that we'll wake out of our sleep and stop playing games and get stronger for God. And don't be estranged, but get stronger. That means draw close. If He said, if you'll draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh unto you. Amen. You, well, I can't feel him, Lord. I can't feel him, Pastor. Well, if you'll start drawing nigh to him, if you'll open up your mouth and start speaking to him. You know, this praying out loud, uh, I come from a background, what religious background I have. We didn't pray out loud. We And sometimes when I really, really want to go into my prayer closet, I'll do that now. And I, I know God can hear me. But then there's something about verbalizing prayer. Lord, you know, and maybe you can't do it there at the house because you don't want anybody listening. You don't want the kids listening. You don't want your wife listening. You don't want the husband listening. You don't want the mother-in-law, father-in-law. But go find you some wood somewhere. Go find you a place in the backyard and, and maybe get in the utility shed and just start off low. Lord, Lord, I'm here to worship you. I'm going to tell you what, if you'll do that, that will grow into something so big. Amen. That will make you so much stronger. You know, David's initial, his initial uh, response was not strong. You thought, oh, David jumped up. Uh, uh, let's go get them. Let's pursue all. We're going to recover it all. No, that's not what David de- did. He went and fell on his face. I think you get more on your face than you do when you're on your feet. But he was on his, on his face. God... Lord, my wives, he had, he had multiple wives. I know, we're not the man he was. <laughs> Takes a special man to put up with that many. <laughs> I'm brave right now. My wife had to go back to Sunday school. <laughs> I'm a, we like to cut up. We like to cut up and have a good time. But let me tell you something. It's serious time. Been talking to friends, pastor friends. You know, all their churches are full right now. Our church is about full. It's not going to be long. We're going to have to go to that next service because we're getting there. We just need some more people to become part of the dream team and, and become part of the team here to help us facilitate all these people when they come in because we want them to receive everything they can from God. So I, that means I'm going to have to be stronger in these areas. Uh, Blessed is the man that delights himself in the Lord. Blessed is the man. Do you want to be stronger? Start praising God. Yeah. 
I'm going to tell you what Brother Tenney said. He said, well, Brother Bob, or Brother Robert, he don't know my name's Bob. He said, Brother Robert, tell you what, when you can't pray, you ever felt like you couldn't pray? Hey, been there, pastor, couldn't pray. I'll tell you what he did. He just started, he just started off talking slow. And if you'll, keep, if you'll keep verbalizing that before long, you're going to find yourself talking to God and you're going to feel the presence. Of, add some music into it and start worshiping and, 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 and talking to him. And that's part of drawing nigh. Now, how do I draw nigh? Pray and worship and praise. Lift his name up. He said, if I be lifted up, he said, I'll draw all men unto myself. And he was speaking of the cross there. But I believe when we lift him up in worship, he draws men to himself. He will reach out and draw you as we worship. Hallelujah. Stronger, stronger. I've got to get stronger. Oh, it's, I've got to get stronger. Well, you know, David, he was a picture. David experienced trauma. He, on every level, on every level, multiple levels, relationally, financially, and, and in his leadership roles, when the kingdom was split, he strengthened himself in the Lord. Let me tell you something. When you we have to strengthen yourself in the Lord, that means you're going to have to pray. You're going to have to worship. Do the things I'm trying to get over to you. These are good things. This is not just for my, just a, I'd like to introduce this to you. No, it's really not that important. Oh, yes, it is important. It's vital to a Christian that we pray and that we seek the face of God. We not just seek the face of God, but seek the hands of God. A seek God will all of our heart. David's initial response, it wasn't strong, weeping at the lost stress due to the threats of his life. I mean, he's weeping because they're getting, trying to get ready to kill him, and he has to, he has to rally these troops. And let me tell you something, David, the guys who ran with David, the guys who ran with David, they were some bad dudes. They were the baddest dudes there was. People like Joab. Matter of fact, Joab had to be killed when David died because, amen, uh, the avenger of the blood did not get to avenge Joab's blood. So when he died, Joab went and grabbed the horns of the altar and prayed, and the one sent in to kill him, come back and said, well, he, he, won't, he won't leave the altar. And he said, well, go in and kill him then right at the altar. What a place to die. Joab knew. See, it took something extra because Joab knew he was going to die. So he applied himself with everything he had. Strong enough. How, how strong? Strong enough to move on and make progress. Man, you, we, you know, if you're in the ministry, if you're a Christian, there's going to be negative things that happen to you. But are you going to be able to move on or is that going to get you? Because some people, it gets them and they stay stuck right there. They don't grow anymore in the Word of God. They don't grow in a relationship because there is not much of an effort. He shifted to a solution mindset, taking action steps, taking action steps. Do you hear me? I got, you know, I'm under attack right now, Pastor. Well, have you taken some action steps? What are some good action steps? Call somebody in your group. Are you in a life group? If you're not, you should be. If you're in a life group, call somebody in your group and say, Hey, I'm under attack. Could you pray with me? Could you help me pray? That's one of the tools that you have. The name of Jesus is the greatest tool, amen, because at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess so I can put the devil on the road in the name of Jesus. That is a powerful name, and I understand the power of that name. Hallelujah. So, stronger year. Got to have a stronger year. Got to be stronger. Got, got to be stronger, so let's, let's get to work on that. Uh, uh oh, the resistance is not the weights or the muscles, but the resistance here is going to be spiritually. You're going to be shot at spiritually. You're going to be lied to, talked about, cheated, mistreated. What do you do? Quit? No. 
You just keep on. Somebody said, how, what is a walk with God? I said, it's putting one foot in front of the other one and not stopping. Don't stop. Put one foot. How do you make it to heaven? You put one foot in front of the other one and you don't stop. And when you fall off the line and mess up, you don't say, Dead, burn it, I'm quitting, I'm leaving. No, you get back over there on the line and you put your foot on the line and you just keep walking. You just keep walking. You keep walking. And one day, you're going to find yourself walking on streets of gold. You'll find yourself, amen. Yeah, I like this. Recognizing the voice of the enemy. Recognizing the voice of the enemy trying to tear you down. Man. Recognizing that voice. Do you, do you recognize the voice of the enemy attempting to tear you apart? Don't let, you know, you know we say sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Words do hurt. They hurt. They sting. But I'm a Christian. I'm supposed to be bigger than that. I'm supposed to be stronger than that. Uh, whoo, hallelujah. I'm supposed to be, come on, where's your strength? What'll happen when somebody starts making fun of you openly in, in a crowd? Yeah. You ever had that done to you? Just, just a month ago. Had somebody come in. Uh, I wish they'd just come over my table. They wouldn't have had to preach to everybody in the restaurant. They could just came over and sit down with me. No, they wasn't willing to do that. Somebody used to go to church here, and, and but they stood up and they they basically attacked everything we believe. And and my wife and I were sitting there eating dinner. I said, "My God, and we're paying for this." So he leaves. Then everybody in the restaurant comes by me. And said, who's that idiot? He said, I thought I'd come to eat dinner. One old man come by me. He didn't know who I was. Patted me on the shoulder. He said, I come to eat dinner. I won't have to go to church tomorrow because I done been to church today. I said, yeah, but you didn't let this preacher get turned loose. Amen. All right. So you're going to be op opposed. Opposition. Recognize the enemy for who he is. He's not your friend. Let me tell you, if he's wanting to take you off and do something your wife wouldn't like, he's not your friend. Let me tell you, ladies, if, if he's going to take you ladies off, he's not your friend if he's not looking out for the best of your life. Not just your life, but what about your children? Man, we teach children like they're a commodity. Just go over there and shut up and be quiet. Come on. That's the way people treat children. They're not that. They're a heritage of the Lord. They're given to us by God. Amen. To raise up in the way they should go. Oh, stronger year. We're getting stronger. How about stronger? Let's get stronger. That means you got some more opposition coming. Well, what do you do when the opposition comes? You just keep praying. You just keep pressing. Pressing towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And let, let, let's look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. It says, we are his workmanship. You know you're God's workmanship? You're created in Christ Jesus for good works. Let that sink in. You're created in Christ for good works, which God prepared beforehand that you should walk in them. That God prepared this, and he said, you should walk in this. You should walk in these good works. You should do good works. That means if we're going to be better this year, we're going to have to do good works. We're going to have to do stronger works. Don't be afraid of stepping out. Don't, how, how wild is it going to get before Jesus comes? Before the eastern sky splits, I believe there's going to be so many times going to get rough. Huh? Y'all hear about this? You know, they're talking about the grocery store shelves. Uh, go to Brookshire's. I know the ice, been ice on the roads, but before there was ice on the roads, it was about 
two thir- about two-thirds full, the shelves, and now they're almost empty. I walk in and I, I scratch my head and I, I, I didn't realize first it was the freeze, but I wondered, has Brookshire's gotten down this low that that's all the food that they could put in this store? If they are, if that is it, and if H-E-B goes that way, we're in trouble! Starvation! Not, not fear-mongering today. Just telling you. What are we going to do? Are we going to be stronger? Are we going to be bigger? Are we going to be better? Are we going to be tougher? What are we going to do? How are we going to handle this? When everybody's hungry, uh, are we going to have to move on a piece of property out in the middle of the uh, Let me tell you, I don't know what's coming. I do know what's coming. There are things coming out of the book of Revelations in front of us. But I'm going to tell you something. I believe if God has to, just like he kept the children of Israel for 40 years in the desert, he will protect his children. He will protect us. I do believe this. Amen. Because we are his church was never appointed to wrath. You ever pointed to wrath? Okay, musician, John, come back. You ever pointed to wrath? The wrath of God. Oh, my God. Man, that preacher's talking crazy. So what to think about John the Baptist? There's one that comes after me whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. Dressed in camel hides and eating wild locusts and honey. Looking like a wild man. Reckon what it's going to look like. So we need to intentionally practice the things that produce this strength. And we, did you hear me? Did you hear me now? That's what we need to do. So we need to practice the things that, that brings us, makes us stronger. Because your spiritual potential is far greater than your natural limitations. It's not your natural, Tim. Uh, uh, it's not your natural. It doesn't happen in the natural, but it happens in the spiritual. So your potential, far greater than the limitations of your mind and your body. I can't do that. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do that. Why can you do this? Because God has called me and he's mandated me. Amen. That's what he's done. So, don't buy, don't buy in a false narrative. Recognize the voice of the enemy. And your potential is far greater than the enemy. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. Listen to this. It says, For we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. That we should walk in good works. That means we got to have, you know, faith without works is dead. Somebody says, I don't have to do anything. Just believe, oh, no, no, you got to have some works too. But faith without works is dead. If all you're doing is works, all that is is works. This Holy Ghost stuff, that's faith. It takes faith. It takes faith to walk off into, into the midst of the God of all creations. Oh. So, for we are His workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. You know, God made you. He didn't make you like me. He made you like you and me like me. Because he didn't need another me. We just needed one of you or a couple of you. Amen. You're one that got the, didn't you want, you want, you one that got the Holy Ghost Sunday? Lauren. Amen. Got the Holy Ghost. Awesome. Is that, is that right, Lauren or Laura? Lauren. I thought it was Lauren. I have a little trouble. Now, don't be too critical on me that I am getting a little bit older, and it does sometimes take me a couple weeks or months to learn everybody's name. But I'm going to know your name. I'm going to get your name. I'm going to love you. I'm going to teach your kids. I'm going to treat your kids, and I'm going to teach your kids right things. We care about them. We care about your kids. 
Kids are not just somebody to put them off in a corner and be quiet, but kids are heritage of the Lord and they're for us to teach and train in the way they should go. So we have our hands full. You know, everybody has the potential. Let's all stand all over the house. Everybody has the potential. Everybody has the potential for stronger, for being stronger spiritually. You just got to cash yourself, cash your cares. So don't buy into false narrative. And, and, and listen, initially, practice the things that produce strength. Prayer and praising God. Prayer produces strength. Now, you can be going down the highway in the automobile and turn on the radio and get to listening to praise and worship music. Does that do anything for you, Jeremy? It does? Wow. Connects with your spirit, doesn't it? But it connects with God's spirit, which connects with your spirit, because he has the Holy Ghost. Amen. And you feel that presence and that power and that anointing flowing in you. Matter of fact, he said you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. But power what? To be a witness unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the world. So, we need to remember this. Praying and praising, reading and speaking God's Word, planting seeds of strength. Come on, you can be, be strong in the Lord. Sometimes that's all that, just be strong in the Lord. Pastor, I've been having some problems. Well, I, you ain't having any problems. Nobody else ain't having most of the time. I know some problems are big problems, and, and you need to address them. But don't get caught up in anger. Don't get caught up in strife. That's negative. Don't get caught up in negatives that pull you down, that drag you down, and leave you with no victory. So have a biggest, bigger purpose for this year. I was going to preach about Hezekiah this morning. I, I will say this. Hezekiah, prophet, had told him he was not, wasn't far from this world. He fell on his face and repented. And I think the prophet, if my memory serves me correct, the prophet come back and gave and said, the Lord has heard your prayer. He's going to give you some extra years. And I believe if, I'm, if my memory serves me correctly, he lived 15 more years. That's, that's 15. Lived 15 more years. Wow. What did Hezekiah do? He finished strong. That'll work. He finished strong. That means he said, man, I'm not going to just die. I'm going to get up and I'm going to repent. I'm going to start worshiping God and I'm going to be the leader. When are we going to step up and, and reach our full potential? I tell you when it's going to happen, when we start worshiping God, when we start having prayer meetings here around the front of this church. Amen. That's when we're going to see those tremendous things happen. So, oh my God. Purpose involves effort. Purpose. See, to reach God's purpose, I'm going to have to have a strong year to do what God wants me to do. And the reason for living is the purpose. Reaching lost souls. It was a joy to see these people pray through Sunday. I was over here. Thomas? Thomas's wife got the Holy Ghost right here last Sunday. Amen. Thomas already got it back there last, in prayer meeting. In prayer. He got there's Then there was one over here. Man, there were so many I, I couldn't keep up with them. I like to keep up with them, but I, I couldn't, brother. That's a good thing. You know, it's a good thing when you get to where you can't keep up with them. That means you're growing. Hallelujah. But so I want to ask you this morning. You want to have a stronger year? You want to have a better year? I know a month is gone, but we still have 11 months. Yeah. So let's go for the gusto.
Amen. Let's go for it all. Let's go for it all this year. Let's give Him all the praise, all the honor, all the glory this year. I'm going to invite the people who pray in the altar if you guys would come. And then I'm going to invite you. If you were here last week and you prayed and you want to pray again and maybe.